Hello everybody, my name is Riku Keyblade Master, and I would like to welcome you guys back to my channel. Um, before we get started, I want to talk about this app known as the Amino app, which houses many different types of communities. Kingdom Hearts, Sly Cooper, maybe even Ratchet and Clank, or Hell, um, Crash Bandicoot, you know, the drill. If you would like, definitely check that out. Join many different communities. Post your different thoughts, theories, and whatnot. But with that out of the way, let's get started. I would also like to mention Mulatto Sly for suggesting that app to me and coming up with a few ideas that I'm going to mention in this video, but I'm just going to tweak them a little bit. So, let's get started. First off, in the trailer, in the teaser trailer at the end of Sly 4 Thieves in Time, after you've completely 100% of the game, you get a secret ending to where Sly is actually in ancient Egypt. Now, Here's how this could play out. And this part, this first part will be playable. Sly is wandering around ancient Egypt. And at some point, he ends up actually fainting or passing out from the heat. And, um, this is where his ancestors, Slight in Common or Slight in Common II, either way, this is where he and his gang, the Sandstorm Bandits, come into play. Which, I really like that name, Mulatto Sly. I don't know how long it took you to come up with that name, but I really like it. It's really, really cool. Um, but anyways, we get helped by his ancestor, by Sly's ancestor, and his group, the Sandstorm Bandits. Sly is also injured. That could also have played into the factor of him passing out. Because the crash landing could have injured him as well. But Sly ends up getting helped out by his ancestors, group, as well as him, and the patch up becomes successful. Then, Slight and Common or Slight and Common II start wondering, Hey Sly, how did you get here in the first place? Sly interjects back with, Well, a few members of my gang and I were actually fighting someone who had some pretty nasty abilities such as like time travel and stuff and um they have a long discussion about that and then slight and common or slight and common the second ends up interjecting back on the whole time travel aspect and is like Hey, wait a second. I know what you're talking about with these newfangled time machines. Because I saw someone from a different time period who looked like they came here with one of those. Um, and Sly asks... Did that person happen to mention their name by any chance? And he, and the ancestor interjects back, Yes, Penelope is the person's name that came here. She came here on a quest to, for some reason, annihilate us. My gang and I overheard her talking about annihilating every single Cooper in existence. 
She's working with... She's also working with some sort of... Owl? Creature? Who calls himself Clockwork. And that's Clockwork spelled with an E. Not an O. I can't tell you how many times I got that wrong. Um... So anyway... The Ancestor asks Sly for his help to assist in taking down Penelope and Clockwork. And mind you, this is before he became a homicidal robotic owl. I mean, he was a homicidal owl before for Hayden the Coopers, but this was before he became a homicidal robotic owl. Now he's just a normal owl. Well, there's some more things that end up going down. And later in the process of that same episode, by the way, the episode's title could be called Egyptian Escapades or something. Um, or it could be called Land of the Pharaohs. Um, a little bit into it, but not too long after we meet up with the Ancestor, Sly has his communication device still. And it's still operational. And he contacts Bentley. Bentley receives a mysterious message from Sly or hears his voice in his ear and begins to talk to him. Sly says, hey Bentley, I really, really could use your help, yours and Murray's. I could really use your help because I'm in ancient Egypt, I'm with my ancestor, and my ancestor has a spot of trouble, and we discovered the enemy, and we need your assistance. Bentley gets the van ready along with Murray. Dimitri is, again, watching over the Thebius Raccoonus because it was irreplaceable and the only guide they had. Again, it was far too risky for them to take the book through time with them, which Bentley's little communication device to contact Dimitri where or when they travel comes in handy. Bentley and Murray show up in the ancient Egyptian time period and they get the lowdown from Sly and his ancestor on who is trying to change the Egyptian time period and or destroy the ancestors. This would take place actually in Slight and Common's perspective before when Slight and Common the second was a kid, um, someone's after me and my son deal. So, that's pretty much it. Um, as far as the other portions of this episode, we'd end up doing a mission that could consist of you know, not, not an early mission per se, because it's still early. 
We could also... One mission we can do is reconnaissance with Sly, and we can take photos of the devices that Penelope and Clockwork are creating. Maybe even get a shot of the blueprints of Clockwork before he becomes a robotic owl. Maybe even get a shot of those before Clockwork turns into a robotic owl. And, um, you know, so who knows, maybe, maybe Penelope actually did have a hand in Clockwork's robotic construction. Um, but they start to wonder after doing reconnaissance, we start to go back to the hideout and piece things together, and then comes another mission where... Bentley has to hack the different computers that we ended up taking reconnaissance of and get some data from them in order to aid us in our situation. Um, after which, after that hacking mission, we get another mission where since we can't tail clockwork because of the fact that he can fly we end up having to tail Penelope as the ancestor on foot but Sly tags close behind him So we're playing a slight in common with Sly behind us, and Bentley places trackers on both Sly and the Ancestor to, you know, track where they are, make sure they're not in any danger or anything like that. Um, then we find... From tailing Penelope after hiding really well because she, you know how they have those times where the people you're following just tend to, you know, look around, you know, behind them and stuff. Well, um, you know, hiding really well because of that. Especially if they make the AI a hell of a lot smarter. Um, you're definitely going to need a chance to hide really well. And, um, then after finding the area where Clockwork is supposedly supposed to be assembled from a normal owl into a robotic owl, then we basically, if the body is fully constructed, we basically pull a slide too. Try to slow down the magnetic inducers holding the parts together to have the parts be pulled apart. Like slide two, when it backfired, it backfires again here. 
realizing that we couldn't stop clockwork from being assembled from a normal owl into a robotic owl, we are kind of on the ropes at one point. We go back to the safe house planning our attack against clockwork and some more missions to aid us before we finally end up going against the main bosses. For instance, we can have a mission where Murray has to, like say they built a fortress after clockwork was constructed. And that fortress has a high wall. We can have Murray climb that particular high wall and get us over that wall to trigger a switch to, like, say, open a drawbridge. And yeah, I'm going towards a castle slash fortress motif. Either we can have Murray do that, or we can have Sly do that with his ability to grab onto the wall hooks, lean off of them, and, you know, boom, boom, boom. That thing he pulled in Sly 2, and which later continued on to Sly 3. Um, but I think having Murray most likely actually be the one to do it would be better considering that I mean Sly yes that would be a lot faster but at the same time that could make up for Murray having to be quote unquote benched when Bob took over in Sly 4 in the um, caveman, kind of the cave raccoon episode. Um, once we get into the fortress, we lower a drawbridge to allow the other ancestors to the other ancestor to penetrate and the um and then Bentley and the rest of the sandstorm bandits. Actually, now that I now that I think about it, um Sly would actually be better. But then again, if the Ancestor um, notices that Sly can do a ninja spire jump and he doesn't know that trick yet, he could be completely confused. Especially since he's the first Ancestor to have written the Phoebus Raccoonus in the first place. Um, so it could be confusing for Sly to come in to you know, see a Cooper pull off another move that's not in the book yet. So maybe having Murray climb over the wall would be better. He, um, there could be some points in the wall that can allow Murray to grip onto the wall. No problem. Kind of, sort of like an idea that I took from playing this old PS2 game called Code Lyoko Quest for Infinity. There's a character who can dress up as a cat and 
he grips onto walls with his claws. And yes, Shadowflower, I'm talking about Odd Delarovia. When he dresses up in that cat suit, um, that's kind of where I took that move from. Except Murray, in Murray's case, it would probably be gripping on the bars. Um, and he won't have as much, um, agility and speed as Sly or Odd. Um, but, yeah, the other thing we can easily do is once Murray's over the drawbridge, or over the wall, he notices that the drawbridge switch, instead of, um, you know, being a normal lever switch, like most switches when it comes to drawbridges, it actually has a computer symbol attached to it. Um, that would have to cause Bentley to do some outside hacking. Try to connect to the drawbridge switch from the outside and having to hack it. But, it's not over yet. Once it gets hacked, that takes the locks off of the drawbridge. Now all Murray has to do, and this will also be interactive, um, now all Murray has to do is press, push the drawbridge down, like straight up, eh, push it down. Because it's too heavy to, um, even with the locks off, it is still too heavy to fall down on its own. And it's still a little stuck from not having, being used in a bit, in a while. Or just being placed there. So they haven't had time to break it in. Um, before the gang showed up, they haven't had time to break it in. And after we do the whole thing with the drawbridge, we go into, this is where, this is actually where we would go into the castle, pull off, or castle slash fortress, pull off some more jobs. We see another door that requires specific sets of keys. We see all these different doors that require specific sets of keys to get into them. And each time we get past one door, Sly would have to pickpocket another set or Sly in common could have his chance in pickpocketing. Once we get past all of the other doors that require the set of keys, it could be like a pattern. Keys and then computer. Keys and then computer. So, on one hand, Sly or the Ancestors pickpocketing keys. On the other set of doors, Bentley's hacking from terminals to get in. So it would go from Sly, you have to steal a set of keys to yeah, it would go Bentley giving you instructions. Sly, you have to steal a set of keys in order to get into the store. And then we come across another door. Oh boy. This one seems terminal locked. 
I'm going to have to hack the terminal in order for us to get past this door. And it could be a pattern. And, you know, of course, this will take us a while because the bad guys don't want us to find them. So they end up... So the hacking and the pickpocketing is more so diversionary. If you guys get my drift. Um... So after we go into the main um, room where clockwork is technically being held, and by this point clockwork is actually constructed and fully alive. Even after we destroyed the magnetic inducers holding the parts together, it just sped up the process. So, in a way, we kind of screwed ourselves over. So, um... After we end up Finding Clockwork and Penelope, we end up having a boss fight, per se, with Penelope on Clockwork's back, and she is basically trying to control his function. This is before Clockwork, um, like, Clockwork has a mind of his own, but he still doesn't know fully how to activate his robotic functioning body, but she does. Since she technically helped him become immortal. So, after the fight, we go which will take legitimately three stages to complete. But with the PS4's technology, each stage will be autosaved. Or maybe autosaved, depending on how the game is developed. But I'm really hoping that after each stage, they decide to auto-save the game because if they pull a Sly 1 and make us restart completely over the, um, over back to where Clockwork was first shooting us, that's, ugh, I could tell a lot of people would get frustrated real quick. But anyway, after, like, say, about three, maybe four stages of this particular boss battle, um, Clockwork will say to Slight in Common, and Sly, you guys will never, it's, it's like, it's like this, I am immortal, you will never be rid of me, you think you've won, you think you've won, well you're sorely mistaken, yeah, so, after that witty banner, Clockwork flies off with Penelope, and sticks Penelope in another, um, well, actually, 
Clockwork does something to Penelope that, um, makes her see that helping him become immortal was not a good idea. And we later discover that Penelope was actually, um, All the time that Penelope was controlling Clockwork, Clockwork was actually controlling her with a brainwashing chip in her ear. Um, but actually no. Because I don't know exactly how that would work. Um, but, yeah, at some point, yeah, because at some point during the process, Bentley notices the chip in her ear. A while back, I did how, um, Bentley could be manipulated by Operation Overlord, but this time I'm kind of changing it up because it it's good to have a different scenario. Um, well, Bentley destroys the chip in Penelope's ear. Penelope realizes that without Sly. And Murray, you know, I mean, Bentley's good without them, but she starts to realize that Bentley is sticking to his guns and is being, is on their side. And she ends up actually making up with Bentley. They go back to being boyfriend and girlfriend. And that right there would be the ending of the Egyptian episode of Sly 5. And they would carry out their relationship all the way through the game and maybe even towards the end of the game actually get married. I want to see the same thing with um, Sly and Carmelita as well. A scenario to where they get married at towards the end of the game and actually end up settling down and having a kid. That would be the perfect ending right there to Sly 5. So, in a way, I discussed what could happen in the ancient Egyptian level and what can happen at the ending. So, in at the ending of Sly 5. So, in a way, you guys got two discussions about me. So, you guys know the drill. Comment, rate, subscribe to become a Keyblade wielder, and stay awesome as usual. And be sure to, like I said, check out the Amino app, and head over to VTNBB's channel, as well as Mulatto Sly's channel. Both of them are extremely good sources and honorable mentions. So, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you, Mulatto Sly, once again for suggesting me to become a part of the Amino app. Thank you. And, as usual, stay awesome. And I'll see you next time. Comment, rate, subscribe to become a Keyblade Wielder as well as a member of the Cooper Gang. And thank you.